this video, we're going to be using the model that we trained in the previous video, and we're going to be using it for inference on new images. Uh, we're going to use the same packages as before. So here we're going to import Gluon and the vision data sets and transforms, uh, as well as matplotlib, so we can do the plotting. We're going to use the same definition of the network as before. Uh, we could have saved this as our own package and imported it. Here we're just copying the definition out and, and rerunning to establish what a network should be. We've got the same layers, we can have the same parameters. So that means we can use the same parameter file as before. Once we train the model in the previous video, we save the parameters to the net.params file. And now on the block, we can call the load params method with the same file. And now when we run that, it's going to load in all the weights and biases and initialize the values of the weights and biases of this network to the same values that we trained to previously. So now if we pass the same data, we'd expect the same prediction from our model as after it had been trained. And so if we think back to the previous video, with our image data, we applied a few different transformation steps before we passed it to the network. So whatever steps we took before, with transforming the image data, we want to do the same steps again. So we want to make sure the channels and the height and the width are the correct way around. Uh, we want to make sure that we've also normalized the values of the image to the same amount. So we're using the same mean and the same standard deviation for our normalization. And here, just for some uh, test images um, we want to use for prediction, we're going to use the Fashion MNIST data set again, because that's what we trained our data on. We want to use the same domain. And we're going to be using the testing data. So we're going to set train equal to false. We're looping through the first six images here. So we're extracting the first six images of this data set, both the images and the labels. And here we just want to loop through the images, the six images we have. And we're going to convert, we're going to expand the dimensions so we're going to have one extra dimension, and this is going to be our batch dimension. So we're going to pass one image at a time, which means we want a batch of one. We're not passing a batch of six through our network here, we just want to do one at a time for testing purposes. So that's why we expand the dimension. And you'll see that it's after we've applied the transformer function. So this is going to have already converted and transposed the dimensions and done the normalization. And now we've got this single batch of one image. We're going to pass that to the network, which will give us the result of the last dense layer. And we're going to take an argmax here. We didn't actually need to apply the softmax uh, because the softmax previously was in our loss function uh, because the softmax is monotonic. So whichever, whichever class got the highest value on the last fully connected layer, it's going to be the same one after we would have applied the softmax. So that doesn't make any difference. And we want to take the argmax across the axis of one, which is going to take the most likely class as our prediction. And then we're going to convert to scalar. So we're going to get a single value representing which class we have predicted for the input image. And then we're going to append these to the preds list, the predictions list. So now we've got our predictions for the first six images, we can see how we performed. We can plot the first six images, plot the real labels, and then our predicted labels. And we're using the same text labels as before, which corresponds which class integer maps to which class in, in text form. And then we can see how well we did. So it looks like we've got four of the six correct. And we've incorrectly predicted the fourth and sixth image as shirts when they should have been pullovers. But I think that's quite an easy mistake to make. Now, the, all these examples have been on the fashion MNIST data set, um, which is a good start, but really we want to be applying these models to real world images. And so we need to be working with a different data set. And for real world image classifications, uh, a very common data set and very comprehensive data set is the ImageNet data set. It's going to be multiple terabytes in size if you work with all the images. 
Uh, but luckily, we have some pre-trained networks already in MXNet. And they're also really easy to access. So we have a model zoo provided with Gluon. And the way we can import that is with mxnet.gluon.modelzoo. And some of the models in the model zoo are dedicated just for computer vision tasks. And we've got the vision submodule for that. And here, we're looking to get the ResNet 50 V2 model. So it's going to be pre-trained. So we can specify pre-trained equals true. And that's going to give us um, the ResNet 50 V2 model that's been pre-trained for image net classification. So it's going to contain a lot of useful features that we can reuse for our own model. The ResNet 50 V2 means that we're going to be using the pre-activation variant of ResNet, which is typically uh, more powerful than V1. Now, because we're using ImageNet, we're going to have a lot more classes. It's going to be 1,000 classes instead of the 10 we were using before. And we can load in the SIM set, uh, which is going to create that mapping from the label index to the label class in text. So we're using the download function provided in Glue on Utils uh, to do the downloading of that. And we read it into Python. Then we download a test image. So here we're just going to download an image from Wikimedia, which will be a golden retriever. Uh, we use the download function again, and we can read that in using image.imageread. An image is a package of MXNet. It provides lots of image processing functions. And this was typically the older way of processing images common with the module API. Um, things recently have moved to the transforms, but I'll show you a few of the ways that you could have done it with image as well. So here we're loading in the image as an ND array. And we're going to now do a few of the different transforms. So they're going to be different from what we did with the Fashion MNIST dataset. Um, one thing about ImageNet is the pictures aren't always square. So what we're going to be doing here is going to be doing a resize and a crop. We're going to first resize the shorter edge to 256 pixels with image.resize short. And give the input image and the number of pixels we want the short edge to be. And then the second part of the transform that we want to do is crop. And we're going to take a center crop of 224 by 224. So it's going to leave us with a square image from the center. And now if we just plot that out, so we first, because we're dealing with ND arrays, we want to convert that to a NumPy array, um, because that's what um, is expected by matplotlib image show. And this is our input of the golden retriever. So as before, uh, we want to do a few other transformation steps before we give it to the network. We want to make sure that the um, dimensions are in the correct order. We've got the batch size, channel, and height, and width. And so that's what we're doing as the first step. And we want to do the normalization. So because we're working with a different data set, we're going to have different means and standard deviations. And here, we're working with RGB images. So we're going to have a different mean and a different standard deviation for every channel. And we're going to look at the mean of the red channel, the mean of the green channel, and the mean of the blue channel. And the same for the standard deviations. And with those means and standard deviations, we can do the normalization step by hand after converting the data type. So this is just an alternative way of doing the same steps that we did with the transform. Uh, the transform was applied to data sets, and here we're just working with images manually. So we're going to be doing this in a slightly different way. And now, we will, with this input image, uh, we want to pass it through the network after we have applied the transformations. So we're going to take the input image, we're going to apply the transformation steps uh, as defined above, and then we're going to pass them now to the network. This is the ResNet V2 network that had the pre-trained weights. We don't need to do any of the training ourselves. Uh, this will then give us a prediction. Uh, here, we're actually applying the softmax function. Um, it's monotonic, so it wouldn't change the results necessarily. Uh, but it gives us a better idea of the probability that we're interested in that, rather than just the top class. And here, we're just looking at the top 
k classes that the network has predicted and so with 98 percent 98.6 percent confidence we're predicting the golden retriever which is correct and then much much further down in terms of confidence we've got different types of dog breeds that are vaguely related we've got irish setter labrador retriever etc and so we can see for this pre-trained network it's done very well in determining which class of image we've got not only does it detect that it's a dog it can specify the breed and that's because the image net data set has got different breeds of dog in so depending on what you want to detect you want to check to see whether there's similar classes in the image net data set and if not you can still use the pre-trained networks you just need to um, work with different classes and do fine tuning and you'll see add some tutorials on the NXNet website for doing that.